Hi everyone, uh, very good evening and uh, welcome to these three very short but important sessions that you need to know for COVID-19 and uh, 40 minutes is just to say, I'll try to wrap up each session in less than 30 minutes and uh, we are going to have a very high yielding discussion of COVID. Where have I taken this information from? All of it is either from the uh, Center of Disease Control, that is CDC website, or the ICMR portal, or WHO. Uh, some of these are also for, from the uh, AIMS website, where um, the protocols have been mentioned. OK, so first and foremost, uh, this is not going to be going into too much of detail of everything. Details we'll go into as and when required. Uh, but. Um, more of a diagnostic importance, historical aspect. How have I divided these three sessions? We've got uh, historical aspects with the structure that we have to do. Uh, second, we have to go in for mode of transmission. Third, so what are the things which uh, by which it can get transmitted? Third, we need to know of the clinical features. Then we are going to go to all the blood counts. Then we'll go to the radiology. Then we are going to go to all the tests that you have in PATH and micro, be it uh, RT-PCR or uh, true nat feluda test which all of you really wanted to know about the rapid antigen test in the end we'll talk about the vaccines we'll talk about uh, donning and doffing we will talk about all the different vaccines over the world efficacy of all of them minor minor questions in between like uh, if someone has received a vaccine till how many days can he not donate blood uh, if someone has received a vaccine till how many days can he not receive another vaccine um, if a rapid antigen test is done then what is the efficacy antibody test do you guys know jo antibody test ho raha hai to know whether we did get infected versus the antibody test that one should get done after the um, vaccination there are different antibody tests so some minor details that you need to know as and where needed i'll tell you where not needed we won't go into unnecessary details because there is a lot of speculation also around covid so we need to limit ourselves for the exam so this is only and only an exam oriented session this is not a research work session okay so we won't go into the very very um, ifs and buts we'll go into some very basic exam related questions okay so first and foremost this is because you will be downloading your pdf fmg students any student any exam this is session is for you okay uh, all your questions i'll answer should you get the vaccine and all so like i said uh, keep all your queries under control and keep them for the third session if till the third session you feel your query has not been answered then certainly we'll open the house to questions and we'll have a discussion but wait for these three short sessions because most likely your answers will come under it Okay, so first and foremost, guys, uh, this is just for your PDF so that you know that, um, okay, this is for NEET, this is for FMG, this is for USMLE, this is for dental exam, this is for every exam in the world, okay? So, ab start karte hai, any and every exam that you're sitting for, everything. Hanji, INICT, har exam ke liye, ho gaya, ab shuru kare, okay, fine. So, first and foremost, a very simple question, COVID-19. Corona virus disease 19, again, lot of rumors, December 19, disorder 19, kuch nahi. Corona virus disease 2019, it's disease 2019. Like I said, we'll have at least some 100, I've got 100 one-liners, which you need to know, and then you're sorted for the paper. So Corona virus disease 19, also known as 2019 novel coron coronavirus okay so no other n whatever they say to you it is novel coronavirus some other uh, short forms i have written over here because this is like your key to the entire chapter so as and when i keep dealing with these short forms i'll keep coming back to it okay so this is like my short form first slide out of which i've told you two coronavirus disease 19 and novel coronavirus these i'll come to gradually Okay, so first and foremost, what is the first thing that you need to know? The first checklist is dates and events. Yes, PDF will be available for you to download. So just sit back and listen. First thing, date and event. Let me ask you, when was the first case? Quickly, when was the first case reported? 
uh, obviously you know in Wuhan in China but when no no 30th Jan to bahut late ho gaya 30th Jan hota to COVID-19 kyun kehte must be in 2019 perfect okay so what is also the plan is guys uh, three sessions on COVID na so in the first two sessions I have everything written in the third session all the answers will be gone and then in 10 minutes you are going to give me the answers of both the classes all the one liners you will do the fill in the blank so i'm teaching you for two two and a half classes but those last 15 minutes you will tell me the answers of all the 100 one liners so that you are done with covid and exam tak dubara nahi padna so listen very carefully you are learning with me dates and events when was the first case 2019 that is why we call it covid 19 and 12th december obviously you know it was in wuhan china this information i don't think you really need to mug up okay then after that a group of cases came and by the end of 2019 they had reported it to who 31st december 2019 a full group of cases had been reported by end of 2019 but then WHO, who has lost a lot of credibility in our eyes, I know by now, when was this declared as a public health emergency of international concern? This was almost a month later, 31st January 2020. So when was it declared as a public health emergency of international concern? Let me tell you, still not a pandemic. They've only given a warning. They've only given a warning public health emergency of international concern ke aage ja ke pandemic ho sakta hai tab tak actually ho chuka tha but they said abhi it is just a warning on 31st of january till that time there was a lot of confusion on what to call it till the end of jan they were very confused should we uh, call it uh, the uh, china virus should we do some discrimination against some country then they decided no on 11th Feb, now remember two 11s, okay? 11th Feb and 11th March are two very important dates. 11th Feb, this was finally given its name of COVID-19, Coronavirus Disease 19, 11th of Feb. And exactly a month later, WHO finally declared it as a pandemic. Now, don't ask me questions like, ma'am, where did, was it lab made or was it some uh, country versus country, uh, you know, conspiracy, all that we are not going to go into. Exam, no one's going to ask you, was it a man-made virus or was it a, consp uh, you know, was it a, all that don't go into. Exam-oriented session, focus on that. Okay, so 11th Feb, it was given the naming. 11th March, it was declared as a pandemic. And then 22nd March, we guys were put in a lockdown, nationwide lockdown. Yes, everyone remembers that date very, very well. So this is what happened in the beginning of 2020. Repeating, repeating. First case, 12th December, 31st December, end tak, we had come to a group of cases. Public health emergency of international concern, 31st January. 11th Feb, 11th Feb, it was given the name. And one month later, it was declared as a pandemic. 22nd March, national lockdown, nationwide lockdown. Obviously, only in India, you need to know. Finally, the two most latest ones which have changed the entire game now. And that is the world's first COVID-19 vaccine was registered in November 2020, last year, four, five months back, November 2020. I'll come to the vaccines also, which one and what happened, but 11th November. And over here, over here, when was the vaccination and when has this vaccination drive started? Just now, mid-January, 16th Jan 2021. So right now, 16th Jan 2021, the vaccination drive of Covishield and Covaxin has started in our country. Up till now, is it okay? Someone asked me in between that, ma'am, when was the first case in India reported? So there's a lot of controversy on that. Some uh, of the places it is 27th Jan and in some of the places it is reported as 31st Jan. If you get, that's why I didn't write it over here, but if you get a question like that, that when was the first case in India reported, the safer answer if you have only one January date, then select that. But if you have 27th and 31st, then go for 27th Jan. Okay. Ideally, I don't think that should come because if you read literature, there's a variation in this date. That's why I didn't want to touch upon that. 
okay let me ask you one more thing what's the incubation period we are doing all the uh, number number game we are finishing off incubation period perfect so it is 2 to 14 days is 14 days 2 to 14 days so is 14 days the uh, usual incubation period if i have to take out the average or the mean is that 14 days the usual one no see they've taken a full range they've taken a full range from 2 to 14 days because some 1 to 2% cases can show you that 14th day incubation period but roughly 5 to 7 days guys 5 to 7 days yes is the usual incubation period but i have to take everyone into account so 2 to 14 days is the incubation period okay what is the fatality rate now again if i take out a global one some countries had a good amount of fatality rate some did not so i come to an overall of less than 2% india the latest that has been the updated one is 1.3 to 1.4% 1 1.3 to 1.4% in india is the fatality rate global has been somewhere approximately 2% us has also been somewhere around a 2% 1.9 so roughly remember 2% for india remember 1.3 1.4 okay coming to the next term isolation versus quarantine i think this particular date no one can forget quarantine of the of the uh, contacts 14 days you will always remember for your entire lifetime you will remember this isolation isolation of is done of whom the contacts or the cases perfect isolation is done of the cases again 17 to 18 days is what is mentioned in the literature a lot of literature guys is little uh, you know doubtful plus minus 1 2 will keep happening because it's something which is still uh, a lot of things are happening in this updates are happening 17 to 18 days as isolation and quarantine 14 days quarantine obviously of the contacts and isolation of the cases you know that fine which is the lab which was designated for covid testing the first one was niv pune i think you know that and this mobile application which kept calling you to download it again and again arogya setu this is general knowledge which everyone knows so i don't think you'll get a question on that also now the question comes what is the ha, give me some time for bio safety levels also please okay everything will be covered okay mode of transmission now one of the most um, you can say the question which uh, gives you a little problem so mode of transmission so all of you know can it occur by droplet can it occur by droplet yes so see guys it can occur by what all and by what not that is what you need to know so first and foremost contact and all of you said droplet agreed airborne hai definitely hai after that fomites fomites eye fluid yes saliva yes if you read the cdc guidelines uh, they had said that you know obviously what are we taking usually we are taking nasopharyngeal swab now of the patient but they had said that even saliva testing can be done for covid 19 testing in very very rare case scenario saliva is also a mode of transmission but has it been reported from mother to child or has it been reported um, uh, on breast feeding or is breast feeding contraindicated no so first and foremost up till now we really don't know what the future holds up till now no teratogenic potential has been reported no mother to child association has been reported no contraindication of breast milk not isolated or transmitted by umbilical cord blood or amniotic fluid all these obstetric related till now we have not found an association so if they clear cut ask you that um, is there i ask you yes or no is there a mother to child transmission mother to child transmission no so obviously no mother to child transmission so obviously congenital malformations till now i don't know i really don't know whether it is there or not up till now we don't have cases is what i can say this is not a very old disease na so we have very limited information so mother to child may be ho sakta hai abhi tak till now answer is no breast feeding is it allowed yes 
is this if mother is covid 19 positive is that an indication of an lses of cesarean section no until and unless she has some other comorbidity or whatever other indications of cesarean section till the time those indications are not there you will proceed with a full term normal vaginal delivery it is not an indication of doing or performing a cesarean section so remember this point from the obstetric point of view so coming back very simple you have droplets you have fomite contact nothing to do with blood nothing to do with mother to child up till now although if someone is covid 19 positive or if see they are saying it is not transmitted by blood because we have limited data but if someone is covid 19 positive at present are you allowing that person to donate blood you are not you are not and even if like if i have received vaccine i will tell you in the end if i have received vaccine um, am i allowed to donate blood no so till how many i am allowed but till how many days am i not allowed so today i received one dose after six weeks i received another dose my two doses are complete yes after my second dose for 28 days i am not allowed to donate blood this is one government protocol that they've laid down after the second dose 28 days tak nahi allowed um i really don't know the efficacy and the basis of this because everything is in the uh, formative stage but for your exam this information will be enough okay coming to the next thing now moving on to the uh, yes, uh, Dr. Patel, I'll come to that query also about antibody plasma. Like I said, if your query is not sorted by the last session, bring it up. All these queries, I know what all you've been asking me since two, three months. So I know where all the queries and research minds are working. So I've addressed all those problems in these three sessions. Okay, now what everyone is focusing a lot, I don't know why you guys are doing that. You are going into the intricate details of the structure, which is very complicated. Just because one journal called Nature published it in a lot of detail and all of you have gone attacking that structure. Too much of structure information is not needed. I'll tell you exactly what is the basic thing that is needed so first and foremost i think everyone knows that covid means crown correct coronavirus coronavirus crown so what all does it have it has a lot of uh, genes remember the genes and the proteins because after some time in the next class when i teach you rt pcr the pcr techniques they are using these genes and these proteins so let me go one by one the one that is coming out the spike that is something which is the most important the most important the spike protein which has s1 and s2 it has two parts s1 and s2 and obviously you know that spike protein is the one that comes and binds to cells of our body which receptor of the body entry into host cell which receptor of the uh, host cell ACE2 receptors. Okay, I'll be showing you that slide also where it comes and binds. ACE2 receptors. So S1 binds to ACE2 receptors or S2 binds to ACE2 receptors? S1 is going to bind to the ACE2 receptors. Okay, Achha, chalo. let's move forward. So one, I'll talk more about it. First, let me finish this off. So I have something called a spike protein, S1 and S2. Then after that, I have an envelope protein. You can see it's in the envelope. Fine. Then we have something known as the M protein the membrane protein. So we have S protein that is coming out as a spike. We have the envelope protein, E protein. Then we have a membrane protein. And E and M are usually interacting with each other because they have to form the envelope, na, the membrane and the envelope. So E and M are interacting with each other. Is that OK? After that, you have the nucleocapsid protein. This is the one that we will be using in PCR, guys. This is the one that you will be using in PCR, the nucleocapsid protein. And then inside must be the RNA. Quickly tell me, RNA is of what type? Is it a single stranded RNA? Is it a double stranded RNA? Usually, most of the RNA viruses, they are single stranded RNA viruses. They are single stranded RNA viruses. Okay, now I'm coming to your query also that ma'am, do all the COVID stains, strains have this thing? So again, two more slides and you'll get your answer. Okay, so the same thing, this is like a schematic nice diagram. If the same thing I had to see under electron microscopy, this is what it must have looked like. 
This is what it will look like under electron microscopy. This is the very basic crown. You can see the spikes, everyone. We call them, what do we call them? This we studied in micro, petal-like or flower-like peplomas. Yes, petal-like peplomas. Is it correlating with your schematic diagram? Everyone, if you get a picture like this, you will be able to identify this as COVID. Fine. Let me show you another picture now. So this is where I want to ask you one very expected question. So uh, airway cell, the lungs, and this is your COVID. This is your coronavirus. This is what you've seen. So you've seen that spike protein, the S protein, correct? Okay. Apart from that, one would be the S protein. Can you name the other genes for me quickly? Other than S, you'll have a membrane protein. Perfect. That is going to fuse with one more thing to form the envelope. Amazing. The envelope protein. And uh, inside, you are going to have the nucleocapsid. Inside, you are going to have the nucleocapsid. Okay. Out of the spike protein, S1 or S2. What is going to bind? S1 or S2. Okay. So if this is the spike protein, this has S1 and this has S2. Which one is going to bind to the ACE2 receptors of our body? ACE2 receptors, S1 will bind. Again, the story doesn't end there. You are right, S1 binds to the ACE2 receptors. But does the entire S1 bind to it or something in S1 is going to bind to it? So I want all of you to note this S1 because now they are doing a lot of studies nowadays and they are not they are saying that achha, if you want to stop the binding target the s1 correct target the s1 to binding nahi hoga. in s1 also amazing they are saying target the receptor binding domain there is a receptor binding domain and that receptor binding domain is what is actually going to go and bind to the ACE2 receptor. So see the full spike protein is not, S1 is not binding. S1 may be a special area, hai, receptor binding domain. And that is going to go and bind to the ACE2 receptors. Is that okay with everyone? Fine. So can I say that this is the binding, but... There is something else in our body and in our cells which is going to facilitate this binding. And what is that thing that we are providing? We are providing something called TMPRSS2. TMPR. Do you agree? It is transmembrane. First and foremost, virus gets TMPR or I am giving TMPR? Host is giving TMPR. I am, we are giving TMPR. Okay, first and foremost. Secondly, do you see it's transmembrane TM? It's through and through the membrane. And what exactly is it? It is a PR. It is a protease. It is nothing but a protease. Protease. So actually you will say that ma'am, we kept thinking the hero of the story is S, which is binding to ACE2. But who is going to activate that S to bind to the ACE2? Who is going to cause activation of that S protein? The actual hero of the story turned out to be TMPRSS2. So when S is binding to ACE2, TMPR is actually activating that spike protein to bind to ACE2. So can I target that? Pharmacologically, can I target that? Yes. So you have some uh, nephamostat and other drugs which they are saying which will inhibit the TMPRSS2. If this is inhibited, will the S protein get activated? No. Will the binding occur? No. So that is exactly what they are now trying. Like this, many drugs are being tried. And obviously, we started long back with what? Long back, we had started with the first drug profile axis ke liye diya tha sabko, hydroxychloroquine, right? Long back, that is how the story started, correct? So a lot of drugs. Now, obviously, the I don't know whether you guys have read this or now, not hydroxychloroquine now is uh, having a very, very doubtful um, outcome and is no longer being given as any profile axis anywhere now. But yes, that time, uh, hydroxychloroquine was the hero. If you remember, it was not available on any chemist because people had stocked up hydroxychloroquine thinking that they are going to uh, you know, save themselves with that drug. Anyway, so TMPRSS2. I know it's a session of COVID, but you are exam going students. And I have to ask you, TMPRSS2 with something else, fusion, 
this is seen in one cancer in males i have to ask you this it's a very important question tmpr ss2 and something fusion is one of the very very common uh, fusions of amazing males so this extra information i have to share with you tmpr ss2 and erg fusion and erg fusion this is a previous year aims and jipmer question this has been reported as one of the very common ones of prostate cancer very common fu fusion of prostate adenocarcinoma you guys are right so tmpr ss2 one additional question another way tmpr ss2 activates s spike okay all said and done this is just your basic so they will bind they will fuse the virus will enter okay but at the same time i need to go into don't worry you don't have to learn everything in this little bit of detail i need to know you'll ask me that ma'am this is you told me na single stranded rna you guys told me single stranded rna correct so little bit details about single stranded rna you'll say ma'am i think i know the genes overall over here mujhe genes pata hai if you ask me about the structural genes have you all heard of n gene e gene m gene and s gene have i taught you s protein m protein e protein and n protein yes many students are remembering it as mens also correct that these are the proteins that covid has m e n and s so this these genes you know can i use them later on in pcr i can so i'll keep that information with me other than that i have in the rna at the end of the day it's rna right it has open reading frames 1a 1b like that it has o r f open reading frames it has and within those it has something called as r d r p don't worry everything we'll talk again when we come to pcr i'm just giving you some spoilers giving you some orientation to the words rna dependent rna polymerase what is rdrp i'll teach you again in the next class it is rna dependent rna polymerase so have you become familiar with what all is there in the virus so that later on you don't have to struggle with it okay so it has open reading frames can i use it for pcr yes it has rna dependent rna polymerase can i use it yes can i use the mens proteins and antigens yes i can so this is your okay i'll write that open reading frames although uh, i'll be telling you later on nowadays open reading frame is not being tested in pcr it's more of the n gene that they are testing anyway i'll tell you that later so this is done mode of contact is done quickly in this session let's finish off the clinical features so that in the next session i can talk only about radiology and pathology and microbiology diagnostic part okay so first and foremost coming to the usual things ye i'll take a minute to read this you don't need to know fever pata hai uh, now let me tell you earlier patients were coming to you with very high grade fever now in this second wave in india a 99 degree low grade fever is now what is the recent trend jo ab now what is going around now the recent trend is low grade initially it was high grade okay other than that there is a dyspnea shortness of breath yes and dry cough and dry cough so this was uh, initially it was considered as the triad that uh, there is a fever dyspnea and dry cough but now we've actually come to a conclusion and who and icmr have reported that the triad is actually not something which is more common triad is something which is only seen in 15% this three together fever dyspnea cough is actually seen in just 15% okay loss of smell and loss of taste till date people are testing themselves like this for covid so loss of smell and loss of taste is still a very well known uh, you can say starting clinical feature of anosmia yes but um, a very recent study that has been published in on the indian portal it's an indian journal so they've done a study on the indian covid patients and they are trying to figure out the reason till now but they saw that patients who had started their journey with anosmia loss of smell loss of taste they ended up having a better prognostic outcome now how and why is obviously a long journey but um they and indians only indians i'm talking about our country showed the study that they were having a better outcome okay so next gi complaints 
initially it was said this is very very rare but i have personally seen a lot of uh, patients who've come with gi complaints as the primary thing fever with gi complaints actually in our country it has been quite a high value number of patients who are coming like that and even many people after the vaccine are not presenting with any uh, other symptom after vaccine one of the side effects many people are coming with diarrhea so yes gi complaints in our country is not a rare thing it has been it has been yes and all of you know in your vicinity you've seen that muscle aches and pains headaches if you want to say yes so this column i've left for everything miscellaneous so today i was reading uh, i was just scrolling through instagram and today i saw someone i had to share that with you i couldn't get that screenshot and today i saw that someone had put a story saying that uh, one of the frustrated physicians said that the only two things that covid cannot cause is fracture and pregnancy the only two symptoms that covid has not caused up till now is fracture and pregnancy other than that everything else has been reported i thought i had i took a screenshot of that meme but i forgot to share it over here so i'll i'll show you in the next class it was rather very funny and uh, actually that's true everything under the sun has been reported okay now coming to the next uh okay so these are okay sounding ones nothing which is uh, life threatening this is what is who has written something about it okay so what is this first and foremost thromboembolic events you guys know dic has been something that has been deadly in these patients dic and thrombosis venous thrombosis more commonly in 67% cases um more than arterial thrombosis okay so venous thrombosis more commonly reported than arterial dic has been reported which is deadly so what are the blood test parameters i'll be telling you quickly in the next class will i say pt aptt will be increased will i say d dimer can be increased yes so all dic related parameters everything can be increased fine now the most important thing that has been published in 2020 is the multi system inflammatory syndrome so they said this was something even more dangerous they said that um, um, pulmonary involvement is fine pneumonia ards everything is fine there were patients who were coming with very very less pulmonary symptoms there were patients who were covid positive their pulmonary symptoms were very minimal and their extra pulmonary symptoms were more multiple organ dysfunction like cardiac damage liver damage renal damage or gi symptoms their extra pulmonary systems at least two systems being involved there they were more in comparison to respiratory symptoms so then they found that they called it multi system inflammatory syndrome multi system inflammatory syndrome they saw it in adults also they saw it in children also so mis a for multi system inflammatory syndrome in adults mis c is multi system inflammatory syndrome in children is that okay and the cut off guys mind you cut off has been 21 years okay 21 years has been the cut off over here so that is what you need to note and what is the criteria covid positive hona chahiye patient respiratory symptoms minimal other than respiratory symptoms more and acute phase reactants are increased i'll be telling you in the next class yes interleukin 6 c reactive protein all of those are going to be all of those are going to be increased provided all other causes of multi system involvement have been excluded so clear cut patient should be covid positive and any other a uh, comorbidity should be excluded last year do you remember this was reported in children and they were saying that there are some children who are presenting like kawasaki disease especially cases came up in maharashtra last year yes when there the, there was a peak in maharashtra that time they said that there are some 21 28 cases odd cases that were being reported like kawasaki in children or toxic shock syndrome so later on they finally labeled it as multi system inflammatory syndrome in children they were presenting like kawasaki they were presenting like toxic shock syndrome okay the last thing after which we'll go in for a 20 minutes break and that is the clinical course very very simple mild severe and critical this has been given by who and this has also been adopted by icmr clinical course is very simple if you read it you'll understand mild hai 
patient is only having little fever there is no dyspnea there is no hypoxia so easy one severe obviously difficulty in breathing has started hypoxia has started so that is going to be severe and critical is when the patient either has uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome that is critical multi organ failure that is critical severe pneumonia that is critical so i think if you read through this you'll understand the intensity mild is no dyspnea no hypoxia severe is dyspnea and hypoxia critical is having multi organ involvement ards severe pneumonia and this is where we expect a question so uh, no this is mild severe critical no moderate mild severe critical last thing for the clinical features children are they showing more of these uh, usual things like fever dyspnea dry cough no all these rare things that i'm talking about children are showing more atypical presentations and they are coming across as more of carrier states so remember these two points again which who has published they are coming across as atypical presentations and they are coming across as carrier states so we are done with the dates and events we are done with the structure and the genes we are done with the clinical feature and the course what do i have planned for the next session i first take you up for blood tests and radiology all the ground glass opacities corad scoring severity scoring all of that and after that we will yes i'll cover the vaccines of course uh, drugs not too much in detail uh, but vaccines in full detail from pfizer to sputnik to uh, moderna to covishield covaxin all that and dr shipra like i said would detail me you don't have to go into the uh you know how rna is coming out and all of that no one's giving you a long question most important what is needed is mentioned over here and in the next session very important not just radio pathology micro guys feluda testing uh, rt pcr and where do you uh, how do you collect the sample um, nasopharyngeal swab all of that okay uh, how long does covid last on surfaces on every surface a different uh, hour and day range has been reported so um, that is different doffing donning included here doffing donning included spo2 they are uh, who has uh, considered less than 95% to be um, given attention to okay dr usha okay next ma'am uh, dr vignesh anything like bleeding manifestation i said na dic dic thromboembolic phenomena very well very well possible uh, rare questions in animals can covid happen initially they said no then they started saying yes so correct menstrual irregularities cases have been reported cytokine uh, storm dr ambika interleukin 6 yes increase we will talk about it mi cases uh, not mi you can say troponin activity is found to be increased all this will come all this will come in the next session at 8 o'clock troponin activity is found to be increased uh, cardiac damage liver damage is possible uh, interleukin 6 is an acute phase reactant yes d dimers interleukin 6 all of this is increased i'll show you the list of what all is increased i will show you that list for sure uh, what are the blood findings that are released uh, what is a fomite fomite are surfaces like um, materials jaise clothes uh, tables uh, utensils furniture all of those those are fomites okay surfaces basically so obviously if a patient touches the surface and then someone else touches the surface possible yes ldh is increased okay guys let's go in for a break all your queries i know are coming up in the next session so uh, let's meet up again at 8 o'clock